Hey Rise fam, Pastor Michael here. Welcome to day 29 of our 40 day journey that we're going through this year. Uh, really uh, excited for the passage that I have for right now. Um, I, uh, I actually wasn't the one who assigned all of these, somebody else on our team did. And so when I saw that I have 2 Thessalonians chapter 3, I got excited about it because it's a passage that I have a little bit of history with. Uh, but we're going to uh, read that in a moment. But before I do that, let me just remind you guys that on September the 10th, which is a Friday, that's the last day of this 40-day journey, we are kind of putting a, a final seal on everything. It'll be a night of worship that we're doing. So make sure you carve that out in your calendars, Friday, September 10th. Uh, it's going to be a great time of just pressing in, worshiping, uh, hanging out with people on that night. And I would love for you to join me for that day. Um, so let me give you a little bit of background with my experience on this particular passage. Um, I was 18 years old. I was in Bible college. I had just gotten there. And it was a large class, probably 500 students. And one of the students came up afterwards and asked the professor a question. And I was just kind of uh, listening to what was happening. And what he said is, hey, I got some friends that are believers and they just don't seem to be interested in their spiritual growth and spiritual journey uh, the same way I am. Uh, I, I'm trying to grow in my faith. I'm trying to see what it looks like to become more like Christ. I'm trying to love people in my dorm room. I'm trying to be a, a good testimony to my family. Does it mean I have everything perfect? Absolutely not. But I, I genuinely am just trying to, to grow in my faith. And there's these other people that are, 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 are believers that just, they're not near as interested as I am in these things. Uh, and it wasn't a judgmental statement. It was just, hey, I got some people that, that claim they're Christians and they just have no interest in the things of Christ. They're just interested in the label of it. And so the professor instantly was like, just rattled off this verse. And it was 2 Thessalonians chapter 3, uh, verse 6. And it says this, Now we command you, brothers, in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ, that you keep away from any brother who is walking in idleness and not in accord with the tradition that you received from us. And, and when I heard that, that seemed pretty radical to me that he was like, hey, basically flee from these people. Don't associate with them. Get completely away from them. But as I began to understand what this means a little bit more and, and see how this applies to various spheres of life, it began to make a lot of sense. Um, so, so first we have to recognize that it's talking to other believers. So this is not saying you, you run away from anybody that doesn't think like you. No, it's talking about people who should be thinking the same way as you, but really aren't functioning the same way that they're supposed to. Uh, the word that talks about idleness, um, it's actually this, uh, in the Greek, it's this word atakos or ataka, and it references kind of a military group that's moving in a direction. So you, you picture you have a, uh, an assignment that a, a group of people's on, and in this example, it's military, but this could be a group project in school. It could be a business initiative. It could apply to so many different spheres of life. But you get this group of people that are all moving in one direction, and you have one person person in that group who just doesn't seem to care. It's not that they're not good at it because I'm not really worried about the skill set. It's that they just they have no appreciation or desire to contribute to this group function that's going on. And this passage says, hey, if you got somebody like that, you need to get away from them. And the reason is not because you're a jerk, you don't want them in your life, but if you have somebody that is completely off mission, and this could be church, it could be uh, business, it could be a sports team, it could be military. That There's a plethora of ways this could be applied. But if you have somebody that's off mission, what happens is their disinterest or their idleness will then begin to carry over into other people. And what seemed like one person that was disinterested now becomes two, now becomes three, now becomes four, and you catch where I'm going, it begins to expand into where this can actually become a poison that influences the entire movement that's going on. And this passage is, is using a military term, but it's also referencing growing in your Christian faith. And so I would say if you got people that, that are just idle in their Christian faith, you might need to consider the amount of influence they're letting, uh, you're letting them have in your life and in your circle of friends. Or if there's a business initiative that's going on, you got somebody on your team that just doesn't care about what's going on. Well, maybe you need to look at that person and go, okay, is this really a good player for my team? And you, and you can unpack that and apply that to, to whatever area you want to. But the truth is, is there are so many people in this world that, that are just apathetic. 
They're, they're, they're idle. They, they don't care about what's going on. And you know, God bless them. I, I love them. I, I, would, I would love to come alongside of them and help them if they need help. But if they're not interested in moving the ball down the field, those aren't the kind of people that I want in my life that Paul says that this church shouldn't have and that you probably shouldn't have in your life either. Uh, this, this letter is 2 Thessalonians, which as you know, because we've gone through it, uh, also references 1 Thessalonians. And in that uh, book, he says, watch out for these lazy people that are around you. And for some reason, they didn't get it. And so he uh, hits, this, hits them again at the end of 2 Thessalonians and says, hey, watch out for these idle people. They are not the kind of people you want in your life. They are going to bring you and others down around you. And so the encouragement for you is, Find the people that aren't idle. Find the people that are going for it. Find the people that are crushing it. Find the people that are taking some initiative. And those are the people you want to link up with and really go for it in this life. You get one shot here on planet Earth. And so I know for me, I want to make the biggest impact that I can where the Lord leads me. And I know that one of the ways I'm going to do that is by removing those who are idle around me. Now, now if somebody's struggling, Hey, let me bear this burden with you. If somebody doesn't have the tools or is ill-equipped, come on, we'll get you the tools, we'll get you the resources. That's totally different than somebody who is just apathetic and idle in the way they're walking. So I'll read this passage to you one more time. Now we command you, brothers, in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ, that you keep away from any brother who is walking in idleness and not in accord with the tradition that you received from us. And I pray that this word would rest in your core and that you would take some action steps with it. Let me pray for you guys real quick. Lord, I thank you for your word and that it applies to so many different spheres of our life. And God, I ask uh, for myself and for, for all of my friends that are watching this, uh, if, if we have influences in our life that are idle and that are not helping us to become more productive members of the body of Christ and more productive members in society. Lord, I pray that you would give us the courage to get them out of a seat of influence in our life and find the right people to influence us so that we can become all that you have called us to be. And it's in Jesus' name I pray. Amen. Amen. Hey guys, we are uh, down to about the last 10 days right now. I know whatever I'm breaking things down, I kind of think of first quarter, second quarter, third quarter, fourth quarter, because that's the mediocre athlete in me. Uh, but we're down to fourth quarter right now. And so I, I encourage you, press in for these final 10 days. And we'll look forward to seeing you guys tomorrow morning. Love y'all. God bless. Mm -hmm.